Yes. You are not alone. This is the Resistance. <sighs> Sometimes we don't even know where to start these kinds of conversations, do we? Some people like it when we wear masks. Some people prefer. And we just show who we are. Makes it a little less sketchy on people. The masks tend to flag people. They tend to think that maybe you're planning violence. That's never fun. So what's been going on? Last time I said we should have a serious talk about Mr. Jones. Look into what he was talking about prior to the deplatforming. All sorts of beautiful things. There's these new dates. The new 2012 is upon us. Apparently the new problem is going to develop in just a few days. Everybody thinks big, large cataclysms, things of that nature. It would be best if we scaled down what we thought might be happening. The straight theory, very, very few facts, if any, just somewhere where my brain is kind of going. If something is to happen on November 11th, aside from the fact that it's Remembrance Day for the Canadian people, if something were to happen that day, something tells me, I don't think it's gonna be uh, military or violent in nature. Now, it may bring about a violent military reaction. So let's not take that right off the table. I just can't see it actually being an another attack. If we gauge people's fucking uh, fear, there's all kinds of it out there. It's like, they just don't need a new attack. They just, it's not a requirement. People are already scared. They're still scared. There's ample, ample information out there that drops 9-11 at the doorsteps of Israel. And yet, we're still afraid of the brown Muslims. That baffles my brain, like, to no end. Okay, when you got, when you got registered, recognized, snuck out of the country... Mossad agents doubling up as, I believe it was art students. And they legitimately come out with a claim that states that their entire purpose was to purely document an event. A little bit of history about myself. I used to be a big, big reptile guy. I used to love documenting everything I was doing about reptiles. But I mean like everything. Videos, written notes, uh, double like checked and then re-entered into big books and things of this nature. I mean, like we're talking record keeping upon record keeping. I was keeping records of my records. I, I just love that stuff. And in order to document something, for instance, if I wanted to show you what it looks like when an anaconda eats something, it would be required of my brain. To know when the anaconda is going to eat food. If I don't know when it's going to eat, how the fuck am I going to document that for you? I used to breed reptiles. Not personally. I put the male reptile and the female reptile together and, you know, they make reptile babies. It's all good. I'm not a freak like that. But I was a reptile breeder. I used to love documenting how breeding happens. You guys have any idea what the first question a reptile guy gets? Yeah. How does it pee? How does it poop? And then everybody starts to giggle. Well, how does it fuck? Don't worry, I got you covered. I got videos full of that shit. I'll show you exactly how it's done. Stop asking. I just hit play. I seriously, I pull out my phone. I hit play. Here's the answer to all the questions you're going to ask me. When the video is done, ask me what you, have, what you still have questions about. What I'm getting at is that I'm quite familiar with the, what's required in order to document an event. A small event. Feeding a snake. Maybe watching baby boas being born. Maybe I want to document my ass swimming with alligators. Maybe. But what I'm getting at is how the fuck 
does the Israeli Mossad come to the United States of America and document an event that it had no prior knowledge of? Just because they mildly look the same and they both happen to live in the desert, strong possibility that we're shooting the wrong fucking people. I'm just saying. Because it wouldn't have to be no Adolf Hitler requirement here. You don't have to hate. You don't have to hate. Just follow the facts. It's just that everybody already knows that there's only one way to make it right if you took the United States military for a ride. If you took the United States military for a ride and you cost them in blood, it won't matter. That's, that's worse than hitting the towers. That's, I dare say, almost worse than the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, our atomic weapons. The Americans' atomic weapons, North America, pick, I don't give a fuck. I wasn't even alive then, I don't think. No, I wasn't. In the 40s, I wasn't even a fucking idea yet. What I'm getting at is that I'm beginning to believe that taking one of the most powerful militaries on the planet and using it as your personal shotgun, something tells me that's going to carry a heavy price if it ever comes out. Keep that in mind. How anybody documents something that they don't fucking know is coming is beyond me. Okay? How anybody bought the story of a bunch of guys with box cutters is beyond me. November 11th, we're supposed to remember World War II, aren't we? That's, that's like the big thing, right? We're supposed to remember all military veterans, regardless of war. But from what I understand, there's a big thing about the Second World War. We should, we should remember this so we never fight like this again. That seems like a pretty human thing to do. That's just my opinion. We can never really be sure, right? So, what the fuck then? We can't even touch that. So, I think... I think... That this event is going to be economic in nature. It's going to be an economic crash. I think it's also why the Republicans lost the House. I think it's literally being done by design. If we have all the Trump supporters pissed off about losing the House, are they going to pay attention to the world economy? It's kind of like, you know... When they said they wanted to audit the Federal Reserve on September 10th, 2001. No one seemed to remember that claim on September 11th, 2001, do they? Very interesting shit, I'm just saying, man. I think, I think it was uh, JFK that wanted to release any and all UFO files, and as well as auditing the Federal Reserve. Yeah, that came to a grinding fucking halt, eh? Something to do with a presidential assassination tends to put a lot of stuff on the back burner. What I'm getting at is that what uh, seemingly large events are used to mask smaller events. But dynamite comes in small boxes. Don't ever forget that, okay? So what if this large event being used to mask this rather small event? And if this small event is allowed to move forward, it would hold larger consequences than the large event, than the smokescreen. Therefore, everybody gets upset about the large event, the smokescreen, and of course, we, well, we gotta do something about it. It's pissing people off. So we take care of the large event. This will never happen again. And yet the small event goes extremely unnoticed 
And by going unnoticed, it offers the ability to be redone. Unlike the large event, which will never happen again. So, be mindful of the little things that are taking place right around now. Because this little event may very well have large repercussions. And I'm going to say it. Most likely repercussions we're not ready to deal with. I've been saying it for a while now. Best smokescreen in the world. Let Canada and the United States argue about a trade war. Let that happen. And as that continues to happen, no one's going to be paying attention to any of the other shit. Now, will they? Oh, my God, I don't care what's going on in Syria. What the fuck is Canada doing? They live right next door. They're a little bit more worrisome today. Holy fuck. I don't care about what Canada's doing. What's going on down there in Mexico? They're right next door. That sounds like to be a little bit of a problem. You guys catching on here? Just saying. I'll tell you when the last time was that Canada came to visit your ass with bad intent, with malicious intent. It was 1812. We went to the United States and we burnt your pink house to the motherfucking ground. And then you rebuilt it, and your racist fucks called it the White House. Because black people weren't allowed in it. And then all of a sudden, Obama said, ah, watch this. And then Obama came in. That was nifty. It was quite historic. Whether or not it was beneficial for the American people is unfortunately still yet to be determined. Because a lot of his stuff that he would have done... Would have been up under lock and key and you can't really complain and you're just mad because he's black. You know what I mean? See how it is? Nobody ever wins that fucking argument. Yeah, well, you're just mad because I'm white. Does it work? I don't think so. Something tells me it just don't fucking fly that way. Just mad because he's black. Well, that's interesting. Current president ain't black. I don't see black people getting lynched on the streets, uh, just like they said it would be if Trump was elected. Uh, I've seen a few things that he's been doing, very interesting stuff. I don't even have to agree with the man. I can be like, ah, border wall, border wall, wall, wall. Holy fuck, how high are you building this thing? I think it's like a ludicrously small percentage of what one would call border jumping, literally jumping the line in physical landmass terms. It's a very large, uh, very minute, my, my corrections, a very minute percentage. And I think it's something along of something like 70%, but we will scale that down just to be fair. We'll say something along the lines of 50 or 60. But it's a larger percentage of your immigration problems. It's done by plane. The fuck is your wall going to do? fucking ladder at home hardware gets around that security system guys you only need like 700 of them and just space them out every 40 fucking feet it's kind of like what I used to say about the pot in Canada why did I grow it why did I go to jail for it why did I sacrifice my credibility for it why did I do da -da 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 -why, 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 why because it was the right thing to do. And anybody like me understood. <sighs> the war on drugs, eh? Yeah. Guns run out of bullets. And you can't build the jails fast enough. You can't imprison an entire nation without, what's the word? Oh, a revolt. A national revolt. Not revolution. Revolution is normally when most people are like, they're already on the same page to a degree, and like, the government's like, ah, fuck, we have to do this now. They all agree. And if they all agree, yeah, they're all going to agree to vote my ass out. So if I do it for them, they'll probably vote my ass back in. You guys catching politics yet? You guys didn't notice in Canada, marijuana flower is legal, but you're not allowed to buy edibles yet? You won't be allowed to buy edibles, I think, in like 2019? It's another beautiful reason 
to reelect. I've been telling people for years, you stand behind the pot platform, even if you fuck it up, you're going to win. The statistics that I was reading at the time that I said that dictated that about 70 to 75% of the country was willingly admitting that they smoke grass and that the, the percentage was substantially higher. Substantially higher from 70 to 75 is a big fucking number. Okay? But that the percentage was substantially higher of adult Canadians willing to admit that they had tried it. The numbers were stacked against them. They knew this. We knew this. The only thing neither side knew, when was it going to happen? How was it going to happen? Whether or not it would be a feasible model. Don't look at me with a straight face and tell me that marijuana is legal. It is not. Marijuana is regulated. Do you want to know what's legal? Fucking Pepsi. Lay's potato chips. Fucking McDonald's. This is something that is fucking legal. Figuring it out yet? Heavily regulated, double tax, and everybody don't give a fuck because you're not throwing us in jail over it anymore. Fair trade. What more could you possibly want? But the thing is, I don't think very many people have factored in what would happen to the world economies. When this stuff ends up financing a shit ton of stuff in a, in, within a country. You know what I mean? It's just a whole lot of shit. So what's the next step? What's the next step? Well, let's observe the economy. Let's observe what's happening with the president. Let's observe what's going to happen in Canada's elections that are coming soon enough, soon enough. But right now, right now, is that window of opportunity that I spoke of so many times dictating that as soon as the election was done, that there would be four to eight years and that we'd have to pay very close attention to it because there was a small chance, still a chance, but a small chance, that the North American continent would not survive TNT, Trudeau and Trump. There was a small chance. And that once those two people were in office, that the everyday hasn't beens that have to be Meaning, you're already the goddamn president. I'm just going to vote you in for your next four years. you got to leave anyway. You have no choice. You have a step down, daddy. You have no choice. you got to get out. Fuck, I'll put you back in for another four years. One less thing for me to worry about. Banking on stuff like that. That's why the Republicans lost the House. So that you pay attention to the Republicans losing the House. Who cares who runs the House if your money is not worth the same amount of money it was just yesterday? Important shit. The war, the Second World War, was an economic war that blew the fuck out of proportion. Before Adolf Hitler was going on about the Jews, Adolf Hitler was going on about the German mark. The currency that the Germans used to buy their bread, their butter, and their fucking milk. That's what he was bitching about. When you see a day when you have to bring a goddamn wheelbarrow of cash... To buy a loaf of bread. You will be standing in Adolf Hitler's Germany pre-war. Whatever's coming. It's going to come after the dollar first. If the dollar is substantially reduced. You don't have the required currency to purchase the necessary munitions to defend yourself. So. Keeping that in mind. My last video cut out too early, so I'll finish my sentence here and let you guys be on your merry way. But never forget that you are not 
just the resistance. You are John fucking Connor, and you all represent the Worldwide Resistance Network. They're not ready for you yet, because you have been sitting extremely patiently and extremely quietly. Dynamite comes in small boxes, so don't be the loud nuclear weapon. Be quiet. Be small. And then explode with the necessary information to make people say, what the fuck did he just explain? Because that made entirely too much fucking sense for it to be bullshit. I'm Mark from the Worldwide Resistance Network. My videos are few, and I try to keep them mildly entertaining and with just enough questions in your skull to say, the fuck is this guy saying? What is he reading? What is he looking at? Has he been radicalized? Has he been brainwashed? Is he a fucking paranoid schizophrenic? I don't care what you think I am. What I want you to do is look at the information and tell me I'm wrong. So I'm going to tell you another thing right before I close this. You need to know a simple thing about the human language and how it's been perverted. You can go back to my past videos and you'll see that I've explained these things. But did you guys know that the protocols of the learned elders of Zion is being declared as a forgery? Do you know what a forgery means? A forgery is an illegitimate copy of an original that is so precise you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. A fake would be something that was altered to appear but still is not like. Find out the learned elders of Zion, the protocols of the elders of Zion, and know that it is a forgery that there is a real version of that that exists and that is a little disheartening take care guys enjoy your day